So hi, everyone. Today, I'm here to present you a new attack where the attacker can turn our smart devices into motion, his motion sensors. So today, uh, we know that smart devices are everywhere. They are in our homes, factories, and offices. And they are becoming a really important part of our daily life. But at the same time, they are also becoming the target of many attacks. So consider this simple smart office scenario. Three smart devices connect to the router using Wi-Fi signals. So the attacker could hack the device or hack the network to get the sensitive, sensitive user data. Or this attacker can just monitor the network traffic to infer user behaviors. But today, I'm going to show you a new attack, which does not require doing any of those three things. All the attacker needs to do is to drop a small sniffer outside, and the sniffer just needs to listen to the Wi-Fi signals, and it can track human's motions behind the wall. We call this the silent reconnaissance attack. So in this attack, those three smart devices, they just work as normal. And they will transmit Wi-Fi signals. Those Wi-Fi signals will go past the wall. And the attacker can drop a small sniffer outside, and those sniffer can capture those Wi-Fi signals. It does not need to transmit anything. So as human inside moves around, this sniffer can continuously monitor the, uh, her motion. This is on this is done only by analyzing the Wi-Fi signals. And after this, the sniffer can send the gathered information to a remote sensor. This reconnaissance attack will cause uh, real-world damages. Like in this smart office scenario, if the attacker knows whether there are humans inside and their locations, the attacker can gain access to your server room, your hard drives, to steal your important data. So why is this, is this attack possible? This is because of two things. First, today smart devices are filling our indoor spaces. Each room will have multiple smart devices. And more importantly, those smart devices are transmitting Wi-Fi signals regularly. This is shown by many existing studies. We also conducted our own measurement on many typical uh, smart devices, and we find that they transmit multiple Wi-Fi packets even when they're idle. This means today our environment is constantly filled with ambient Wi-Fi signals. Those Wi-Fi signals can be easily captured by an outside sniffer and use that to infer our status. So as the user moves around, her motion will change how the signal propagates in the environment. And the, then the sniffer can capture those changes and use that to infer user's motion and her location. This is exactly why in our attack, we don't need to transmit anything. The sniffer only needs to listen to the Wi-Fi signal. And the sniffer does not need to hack decode the packets, hack the device, or hack the network. And this is a very stealthy attack because it does not transmit anything. Next, I'm going to show you how we achieve this attack and our real-world evaluations. Then I will talk about our defense. So how does the sniffer detect human motion? Let's first look at a simple example. So this Wi-Fi camera here is transmitting uh, Wi-Fi signal and connect it to the router. So the signal will also propagate to the sniffer. When there is no human motion, the, the signal travel follow natural paths. There is direct path and reflection path. The signal received by the sniffer looks normal. And with human motion around, she will either block a path or create a new reflection path. Either way, her motion will cause big signal variation on the, sniff, the sniffer's received signal. And the sniffer detects those ch changes and infer that, oh, there's human moving in the neighborhood of Wi-Fi device A. So in this way, the attacker turns this camera into his motion sensor. So if human move nearby, if human move nearby, it will trigger the motion sensor, and the, the sniffer will immediately know. We also call this the attacker's anchor. 
So this is just a simple case for one single device. When there are multiple devices, the sniffer can separate those signals by their MAC addresses. And then they all become the attacker's motion sensors. Combining together, the attacker could track user motion across different rooms in this target area. So now we know that the human motion is embedded in those signal variations. Our next question is, how do we measure this variation? We find out the total signal strength is not a reliable indicator. So instead, we use the uh, fine-grained metric called channel state information, CSI. And CSI is a well-known physical layer metric to represent a signal. It captures the signal strength at different sub-frequencies. So it will give us more details. So to measure the variation, we first get the raw value of CSI. Then we compute the standard deviation for each sub-frequency. After that, we average those standard deviations across different sub-frequencies. We call this the averaged sigma ACSI. The sniffer can easily cap compute this metric for each anchor and then monitor them over time. Here is a simple example. This is a simple trace that of sigma ACI, ACSI that the sniffer captured for one specific smart device. We can see that without human motion, the value of sigma ACSI is really low. With human motion, the value is much higher. So, this in, so in this way, the sniffer can separate those two cases. As the sniffer monitors this value over time, it can even infer whether the human is moving away from this anchor or moving towards anchor. We also discussed the more complicated cases in our paper. Please refer to our paper for more details. Now let me show, uh, show you the complete view of our attack. Let's see this is a target area that the attacker wants to monitor. Before continuous monitoring, the attacker needs to run a bootstrapping so that it can identify and locate each Wi-Fi device in their individual room. All this attacker needs to do is to get a mobile unit. It could be a drone, a robot, or even hire somebody to do this. So the mobile unit will just walk around this target place and collect the signal strength for each Wi-Fi devices and use those signal strengths to locate the Wi-Fi device in their room. Uh, more details can be found in our paper. So notice that this bootstrapping phase only needs to be done once in the beginning. After this, the attacker can just drop a small sniffer outside and starts the continuous monitoring phase. We implemented this attack in today's smart and smartphones. To do this, we modify the Wi-Fi firmware of Nexus 5 to do passively collect CSI. So this is one of our uh, big contribution. So we are the first one to enable this passive continuous CSI collection on smartphone. Now we can collect uh, CSI information from any commodity Wi-Fi devices. We tested our, we tested our attack, sorry. We tested our attack in 11 different places with different floor plans. We covered 31 different Wi-Fi devices, and we even have five different volunteers walking around generating different motions. In total, we collected over 41 hours of data, near eight hours of uh, human motion. So we first want to check uh, whether our attack is effective or not. So we use two metrics, the human detection rate and false alarm rate. So they are both computed for per room. And ideally, the attacker wants to have a high human detection rate and low false alarm rate. So with four anchors in each room, our, detection, our attack can achieve over 99% human detection rate, with only about 10% false alarm rate. So even, with, even only there are only one anchor in each room, we can, our attack achieves over 80% human detection rate. So we further compare our attack to an existing design in human sensing. So because those designs are not 
designed for adversarial attack scenarios, their performance in our setting is really bad. Next, we want to see if our attack is robust or not. So we did many experiments. Here are two examples. First, we want to check if the anchor its transmission rate is really low, is our attack is still effective. So instead of transmitting at full rate, the anchor is trans only transmitting two packets per second. And it turns out only the human detection rate is affected, and it only drops 1.5%. Next question is, what if the motion is not from humans? So in order to test this, we turn on our fans, our vacuum robots, and have our paths run, run around. And we want to see what will happen. Can we still tell them apart from human motion? So it turns out machines like fans or vacuum robots, they either, either have really low impact or they are, have really distinguishable patterns from human motion. So the sniffer can easily tell them apart. But for dogs and cats, because they just randomly move around and kind of similar to human, so it's really hard to tell them apart. So for people who have pets at home, that could be your defense against this attack. <laughs> but for uh, places like offices, it, it's not practical. So we need an actual defense. So this is from a very important ob observation. That is, the effectiveness of this attack is based on both the quantity and the quality of sniffers received signal. So there are two angles of building defenses. First, we can try to reduce the number of packets that the sniffer can receive. But this can be done by Wi-Fi rate limiting, MAC address randomization, or geofencing. But we later find out they are either not work well or they are not so super practical. So instead, we go for reducing the quality of the sniffer's received signal. And specifically, we consider the signal obfuscation. Now we are facing two choices. We can do this on smart devices or we can do this on, extra, uh, on AP. And because we want to keep the smart devices simple, we don't want to modify all the smart devices, so we let AP to implement the signal obfuscation. The high-level idea of signal obfuscation is to add extra variations on top of human motion so that the, attack, the sniffer can no longer tell whether the variation is from human motion or from something else. So we implemented both the spatial obfuscation and the temporal obfuscation. So we first let AP send cover traffic for each smart device using its MAC address. So before defense, the sniffer only received signals from this camera. Now with defense, the sniffer can receive signals from both the AP and the camera with the same MAC address. Now the AP cannot tell, okay, whether this signal it received is from the camera or from the AP. This adds extra variation to the signal. On top of this, we let AP vary its transmission power over time randomly. It will add another variation on the received signal. So combining those two, we can t see that the sniffer now having trouble telling whether the variation is from human motion or something else. So, so of course, the human detection rate drops significantly. To summarize, this work identified an undetectable silent reconnaissance attack which only requires passive Wi-Fi signal analysis. And it is highly effective in rover settings. And we also provide new defenses. OK, that's it. And uh, I'm ready for questions. All right, time for questions. I, I just want to clarify. If there are multiple devices yeah. in the room, yeah. and all of them are com communicating at the same time, don't their signals interfere? Uh, so. Uh, because uh, the Wi-Fi packets, the sniffer can see, can see the MAC addresses of those packets. Because all the devices in the same room, although they are transmitting at the same time, they have different MAC addresses. So the sniffer can separate them apart and monitor their signal changes over time separately. Thank you for the interesting uh, presentation. Uh, my question is, 
with the technique that you have introduced, uh, could you somehow tell the speed of movement? Uh, sorry. I, I mean the speed, uh, the velocity speed of, of the yeah, movement. Yeah. Uh, so uh, actually, it, uh, we, although we can provide some information about the motion, we can now tell how fast it moves. But it doesn't capture that kind of uh, granularity of the movement. Thank you. Uh, a very interesting work. I'm curious about the thread model. Uh, as you show in your implementation, you are using a smartphone yeah. to analyze the Wi-Fi signals yeah. to to see if the if there is a person inside the room. Yeah. And considering the there is also acoustic sensors on the smartphone, you can directly use the uh, acoustic sensor to tell if there is a person inside the room. So. Uh, how, how is this new method different from, say, just a, a acoustic sensors? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, so the, if the attacker's goal only is to tell whether the human inside or not, so we can consider some other alternatives, like the acoustic or thermal like uh, images. Uh, but the, the thing with acoustic is it can be easily affected by the, the surrounding noises or other, uh, are, <coughs> sorry, so other stuff. So, and also our attack can provide more information than uh, whether they are human inside or not, because we can also track uh, humans' motion and uh, their room locations. Yeah. We've got more questions? Hi, a very interesting talk. Uh, I was wondering whether the quantum measure could affect the performance of the Wi-Fi network. Uh, the, sorry, the, 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 you mean the quantum measure, yeah. uh, the AP, uh, against AP our AP-based defense. Because it, it injects some randomness into the network. Yeah. It could affect the quality of the communication. Uh, yes, so you mean whether our uh, defense will introduce some, uh, will sacrifice something in the net, existing net communication. Yes, so our, uh, our, we did test, because the APs will transmit more traffic, right, because you send out cover packets, so it, but it does not need to send tra cover traffic for every packet. So and we tested our uh, defense only need to sacrifice a little bandwidth to achieve this effective defense. Yeah. One more question. Hi, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, is it possible with, if there's enough anchors pr producing enough data in each room to infer the position of the person in the room versus just is there a person yes or no? Oh, so you mean can we like accurately localize the person where, which, where the person is inside this room? Yes. So currently we cannot achieve such kind of uh, accurate localization because uh, the, uh, yeah, in existing research in uh, indoor localization, maybe they can do this, but they require a lot of uh, information of, uh, or act, even active transmitting packets. But in attack scenario, because we have zero knowledge of all those uh, Wi-Fi signals. So what we can do is actually just locate the person in this room, not the exact location. All right, in the interest of time, let's take all of the other questions offline. Uh, let's thank the speaker again.